Leon. Yeah. Okay, hey, good evening, Galleon. I feel like a presidential candidate here stammering in the beginning of the, of the uh, live stream, but welcome uh, to everybody who's out there on a warm uh, July evening. I have a handful of things I want to get into, and then I'm sure there are uh, questions. Uh, first thing I want to, to start with uh, are a couple uh, utility issues. Um, and one, and uh, the main thing is um, that uh, the Community Action Commission now is, has what they call summer crisis in effect. So in a situation where you're having trouble paying your uh, utility bill, uh, that's certainly a, a, a program in the community that's been a real steady uh, and consistent source of funding for people going through summer crisis or uh, sort of a chronic situation. But in any case, uh, if, you're ha if you have that situation where your utility usage has gone up and your bills are up, uh, contact them at Community Action. I think it's 468-5121, uh, but if you get the wrong number, apologize and, and, and blame the wrong number on me. But uh, they called and wanted to make sure that Galleon residents were aware the program was uh, up and functioning. We talked about them last week with reference to their food pantry work and how they're doing that. So. You know, we probably could talk about the Community Action Commission every single week and something that they do to help people in the community. So I want to start with that. Uh, you know, one of the funnier things in city government, or funny and not in the laughable sense, but um, poorly attended, poorly covered generally from a media point of view, but uh, oftentimes real important uh, part of things changing in the community and legislation uh, being initiated to begin with, but in this case, um, initiation of perhaps changes in uh, some legislation. So uh, tomorrow night, uh, active uh, law and ordinance committee, and a handful of things I'll just hit on that, uh, and these will be Zoom, these meetings will be Zoom, so if you, if you prefer that format, it's a, it's kind of a neat way to attend, and I think Council's working some of the bugs out in terms of filtering questions from comments and those sorts of things. But let me, like an old man, check this real quick and uh, pull up uh, tomorrow night's agenda. Uh, and uh, there are five issues, so it, uh, it could be an interesting meeting. First off is open burning. Uh, there's a minor change, uh, I think, every year. Uh, or most every year we have a complaint from some people about open burning that you know where does a backyard bonfire turn into open burning and so there's a tweak of, a, of our current legislation that's being proposed that would allow uh, any of our uh, law enforcement officers basically now you have to have the firefighters out and I think what we're going to have council look at and discuss at the recommendation of the fire chief is a change to um, allow police officers to to initiate um, any kind of enforcement where they can't um, seem to reason with the, with the person with, that's got the fire and annoying it, their neighbors. Next uh, a topic is something that's been uh, kind of on the back burner, if you will, for a while, but um, goes through a sort of a legislative process, and that's the rezoning of the east side fire station in, in with the expectation that rezoned as a commercial building will enable the city to um, sell it at auction and, and we think get a, a little bit more favorable rate. The other thing about bidding, if, if, it's, um, if it's not listed as commercial and one of the most interested people uh, doesn't have the assurance that it will be zoned correctly, we feel like that, that may depress the bidding or allow the, the value to swing over to the, to the buyers and not to the city, the seller of, of, uh, of, of the old fire station. Uh, next. Um, issue is is something that council looked at a couple of years ago but quite candidly there's four or five situations in town that we that i'm recommending in this case that we look at uh changing or limiting and that's what's called agricultural exemption for property in the city uh that is used for agricultural purposes i'll give you two examples dawsett the old dawsett school property i think that's planted in beans that's an agricultural use. But what we have in a couple of areas that are uh, adjacent to some of our nicer residential areas and, and uh, uh, some of our commercial areas are uh, properties that technically meet the classification as an 
agricultural area. Um, I, we, it was three acres, anything uh, more than um, three acres could grow until they wanted to take it off for hay or straw, whatever. And uh, that was moved to seven. It really didn't uh, cure the problem. There are a couple of parcels that consistently uh, grow above the, the nuisance standard. And so uh, I want to have a discussion with council about the idea of people who, who say they're um, using it in cuttings, but you never see it baled, you never see it rolled up in, in uh, round bales. And it, so it's, it's, it's a constant source of complaint by the adjacent neighbors, and we'll see if council wants to limit that. Um, and so that'll be an interesting discussion uh, to participate in. I imagine people on both sides of that issue, those that own the property and don't want to mow it as if it's a yard, and those that live next door and mow their yard every week and wonder why the difference. Um, two more things. There's a grant uh, that I think is actually going into this committee, so it can be put on the on, on the 14th um, uh, council meeting night. So it's uh, it ordinarily would be in the airport committee, but I think it's been put on this agenda just to get council review before before the, the meeting. And um, the final one is a tree clearing ordinance. And that goes back to a subject that's often discussed uh, within council meetings. People talk with me about it. It has a, it has a sort of a twin to it, and that would be the sidewalk, so sidewalk ordinance. A lot of times the heaved sidewalks are adjacent to some of the old trees that the, and, and there's a range of opinion about whose trees those are. I'm not gonna try to summarize it, uh, it's kind of hard to do it as a neutral, and so I'll suffice to say that discussion, which needs to be done, uh, needs to be had either to uh, instruct our building inspector to enforce the existing ordinance a little more rigorously, which his direction from this office has not been, you know, go out and start tagging nuisance trees, but uh, either change that or change the way in which trees that are nuisance trees, that are dangerous trees, that aren't in close proximity to an electric line, because that's how that's what gets trimmed now. Uh, those trees uh, try to un identify whose responsibility and then how we go about uh, tackling the, the removal of those trees. So that's tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Uh, I don't know, we may have a few dozen people. It's remarkable to me how uh, many people Oftentimes, at a you know prior to the COVID uh, crisis, that we would have uh, four people at the meeting, the three committee members and somebody from the administration. Not a, a terrible, uh, uh, terribly high degree of interest. Well, you put those on the internet and people can zoom the meetings and are aware of them. We get a little word out about the agenda for the particular meetings. It's, it just amazes me how many folks. Uh, tune in and comment, ask questions. And as I said a minute ago, we're trying to work through the bugs so as to allow questions without, um, you know, allowing um, folks from the studio to audience or sign the studio audience. I guess it's the uh, internet audience uh, to um, uh, discuss things that really aren't on the agenda or um, unnecessarily uh, take control, if you will, of the meetings. Um, and another meeting then on Thursday night, uh, worth mentioning in advance, is the Streets Committee. There'll be an overlap in the discussion of the trees because I think technically that issue is in the is in the uh, the Street Committee. <clears throat> so we'll be talking about again about these trees and how to remedy that issue. I think it's also a good time to talk about sidewalks and uh, how we go about um, a, a more uh, agreeable is not quite the right word, but right now there's an ordinance, and if the city went out and enforced them, you know, we would, you know, folks would, would rise up in uh, opposition to uh, being made to replace their sidewalk at their expense. So, not a real workable situation. That would be in the more residential sidewalks. Uh, and uptown, there's a, this, the same sort of issue, and I'm among the many people who believe that one of the deterrence to more uh, business uptown is the walkability of that uh, four or five block uh, Harding Way section, both on Harding Way West and East. Um, so that's going to be discussed. 
I want to mention something that, that happens about every day at the mayor's office. Someone came in uh, with a suggestion slash complaint. And his complaint was sourced in the, uh, it sounded like when he was describing a kind of a young teenager on a bike, riding on the sidewalk, rode right into his bike, or excuse me, rode right into his truck, then this truck scraped his truck. And, um, and it brings up the sort of, the, not the sort of, but the general issue of uh, bicyclists riding on the sidewalk. Um, there's an ordinance against it. There, the, what seems to be the bigger issue here is a, a bit of a loss of common courtesy. I think any kid, 12, 13, 14 years old, right, still riding a bike and not in a car yet, uh, knows not to ride on the sidewalk. If you were to talk to them, they would probably say, yeah, if you ride on the street, you, you quickly find out how risky that is, and so it's safer, and that's why we're over there. So uh, I, I think the gentleman was right. I see uh, kids riding on the sidewalks all the time in and around the uptown area, and uh, I think the other side's true, that drivers um, aren't as alert to those bicyclists. So somehow we have to have a discussion about that and rein that in and so perhaps as part of a sidebar discussion of uh, of what to do about if anything with the ordinance and enforcement of the ordinance there can be a little bit better understanding of drivers yielding and making sure that there's a, a safe pathway for bicyclists to stay off the sidewalks and on the street where they where they belong so um, I'm going to stop right now. I, if, what would happen if I got into last week's utility committee meeting, which was a lively discussion of what's an important topic, uh, I might get caught in explaining the different uh, parts of the AMP-T proposed uh, sale, the sale of our transmission part of our electric system, not our distribution part. Uh, but. Um, I think it's important, and maybe we'll do it next week. Uh, there'll be um, no legislation, as I understand it, next week. But Galleon uh, is looking at uh, working with AMP to change the ownership of our high voltage, high wire uh, electric infrastructure. And it takes a bit of a discussion about how the rates are devised and where the money that is currently being included in your bill, but you're not able to use those dollars uh, as a system. We aren't able to use those dollars to, to make improvements and how this change to AMP ownership of the transmission facility uh, may open up um, the city for a, a, a better way to make those improvements to those uh, essential lines that run between uh, the substations and loop our, our system around town. So. Um, Quite a discussion last week, but I'll stop. I don't know if there are any questions yet or not. Yes, what do we, we got? Have a couple. Okay, let's do it. All right, so our first one tonight came from Steve. He asked, When is the last day to pay city taxes and where can people go to get help? You know, I got a uh, help, and I'm not sure what help is um, as far as like help f filling them out. But you, you, this is in the auditor's world, but I'll take uh, sort of, I'll try to explain the question. The, if you came up here and asked for forms, they would direct you to the RITA site. So if you're starting at square one, uh, I would try to go on the RITA site and call up here in the morning and somebody in the auditor's office can uh, hopefully give you that, um, that dot .com or dot .org address and uh, you can go online, get a form. I, Ordinarily, they have forms over there, but I don't. I can't say right now whether they have local income tax forms. Do you know, Matt, about the forms? Yes, we have hard copies of the forms here, or I posted a link to the Rita website in the comments. And I think today, uh, at the auditor's request, we're, we included or going to include information that tells you the first half of your question, and that is when uh, local income tax are due, and that's the 15th. So that was extended, it seems like, forever ago, uh, back in March. Uh, but now the, the time's come, and so it's, it's really the one aspect, and it doesn't surprise either the auditor or myself, it does, it's the one aspect of the income tax um, collections that's been a little bit uh, slow, and, and we expect those people, like uh, this questioner, 
probably works outside a galleon but owes some local income tax. And it's, of course, that portion of our income tax payers that we're running a little behind schedule and, and uh, expect when people um, trying to comply with the deadline begin to file, we'll have a good collection, what would be in August is when we would likely get that. But anyways, I think that answers this question pretty, pretty completely, both halves of it. Anything else? Yep. Okay. Uh, we had a couple of kind of follow-up discussion items regarding bicycles on sidewalks. Yeah. Uh, for Stephen uh, mentioned that kids could uh, walk with their bikes in restricted areas like the uptown. It's only a few blocks and creates less of a hazard for the walkers going in and out of stores. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good solution. I'm not, you know, and, and um, you know, it, it causes me to think about how can you affect that solution? How can you, without... Um, and irritating is not the best word, but without enforcement that, you know, uh, that, that creates perhaps friction between young adults and the town and the police, uh, that's probably something we'll work on and perhaps to discuss. And is there a practical way to do that? Um, and I'm not going to be the old man philosophizing about how it's the breakdown and responsibility between generations. Yeah, you, the, the Steve's are absolutely, Stephen or Steve's absolutely right. You know, get off your bike and walk it through town. Um, but, but there is a kind of recurring um, problem issue and it's like anything else. You, I don't want to wait until somebody does get hit and it's not the fender of a car or a scrape paint job, but it's somebody knocked to the ground and hurt. So. What's the other one? Um, this one came from Jeremiah, just another yeah. suggestion for a solution. Uh, what are the thoughts on creating a bicycle lane and placing signage to make vehicles aware of bicyclists? Well, it, uh, it's not included in the resurface in a Harding way. So it might be a good idea, uh, a little suggested a little bit late in the, in the game or the process. The other thing that comes to mind is the, is, <laughs> is the hot water that city officials in Bucyrus found themselves in when, the, when they were going to stripe a, a bike lane on what is Route 4 uh, Sandusky. And neighbors who really didn't have any other place to park uh, didn't like that idea at all. So one of the things about that, Jeremiah, that we, you'd want to look at is if you put a bike lane on or striped a bike lane in within the right of way, which they have, they're entitled to a bicyclist. Um, what kind of parking interaction, parking friction would you run into there? It, it, uh, and I don't know the answer to that, but I think that tomorrow is a, is a good time to get this discussion going. And really, it came up today because a guy just stopped and brought it to our attention. And, and you can see with, to, you know, with people just responding that it's, it's uh, perceived as a common problem. So, and there's probably a, a link or something that can be done out in the school to point that out or emphasize that with kids and and in working with our district resource officer out at the school. So we'll kind of note that for the police department to take a look at. So, all right. Okay. And it's then a horrible then. non answer, but we'll, I mean, honestly, it's, it's, uh, I'm surprised, not surprised, but. There's a lot of people who have had that interaction. And, you know, I don't think kids mean to be jerky, but when you're uh, up there trying to shop or do business and one, th one thing or another, and come out of the dentist office, and you're, all of a sudden you gotta navigate around a kid on a bike in the square. So we probably need to do better. Okay, and uh, sticking with the bicycle topic for a second, uh, Dee pointed out that there is a uh, no bicycle sign at the new bike path. Can you explain why that's there? Yeah, because it's not open yet. There's no people sign out there, too. I was thinking about putting a sign out there that looked like Bigfoot and put a cross through that. It's, uh, I'm glad Dee asked that question. I, the uh, we're going to wait another week, so I think before there's an official opening, I think the, there'll probably be some unofficial people checking it out. Uh, there's, there'll be the striping of the middle lane this week, but uh, a couple of things. We want to make sure that the part that was a former uh, salvage yard, the former junkyard, that we do a little bit better job of cleaning up some of the, the antique historicado parts. And uh, 
it's also going to be real hot and uh, real dry and and the uh, contractor that's going to do the seeding local contractor uh, Oakstone was out there today and said I can do this but you're, you're not going to get as good a take on the seed uh, because it'll be out there baking in the sun so what we're going to do is allow for one of those day or two rain spells and then uh, and then they'll be out to what's called hydro seed so um, I, you know I think I would just go out there and be responsible as you trespass but it's gonna be another week before it's open and uh, people around town don't need my permission to check it out there's been plenty of folks back there and with with really like the universal reviews I usually get the hate text but I got some nice text on what it, well, how nice that was and how they were uh, glad that we finally got it done so all right, enough back, pat, patting myself on the back or whatever. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Uh, next question tonight came from RC. Mm -hmm. uh, wanted to clarify a rumor. Um, is the city going to require face masks in public? Oh, I, I, I hope it's one of the RCs I know that's a friend. <laughs> I can't tell because I can't see the name. But what I would say is I, that the, I have no interest in doing that. I have no interest in doing that. The the by and large, uh, our our uh, workforce are using the mask when they're in a situation where they're coming in close contact. They'd be more the safety forces, and the guys in the service department, street water, sewer departments, they're uh, for the most part not wearing masks. They're out in the heat, and so they're. But no, I I think the answer to that is no. Um, it's we're doing the best we can in Galleon to keep people safe and be reasonable about the the uh, the level of requirements but I can't imagine I can't imagine council passing an ordinance and I can tell you I have no interest in doing it so no but a good question okay uh, next question tonight comes from Haley. Uh, why is Kobe Park locked at night again? Kids go back there and trash it, and police can't drive through to catch them when the gate's locked. The I uh, the uh, I don't know what to say about that. I'll check on it. I the as time goes on, the I think what we'll see is that that'll be you know when when. Different positions change hands, so at a point when there's a new mayor comes in, I tell you, I'm going to have in my in my box of here you goes is going to be all the Kobe Park <laughs> questions and a big bottle of aspirin. It is a difficult nut to crack. You hear both sides of that, Haley. You hear people who want it locked so that it doesn't become the quote unquote drug den. And then you have people who use it to walk their dogs or to exercise or to fish. Uh, that's what I heard last, I think it was last week or two. It's like, yeah, I mean, I go back there because my kids and I fish back there. I thought, oh, that, that makes sense because I knew where the woman lived and she's walked away. It's, it makes all the sense in the world. Um, I'm real big on committees tonight. I'm sloughing everything off on city council. But one of the things we have to stop talking about and start dealing with is a dog park. So we're looking at some general fencing quotes for four-foot fence and trying to not go in to the most expensive fencing option. But And so I think once, uh, you know, if, and, and uh, what I'm going to ask Aaron Ivey, who chairs the Parks Committee, to see if he can pull together and we would take interested volunteers. I think it was about three weeks ago we had the active discussion about the the uh, locking up of South Park baseball field and dogs in the south end of town needed a place to exercise and, and stuff. Um, exercise wasn't the problem. It's the stuff that was causing, I think, the friction. But anyway, um, we really have to bring those people who are interested in having a dog park of some size and fashion together, get a site selected among three or four uh, options. And, um, and I think at that point, if Kobe Park would come to the top of that discussion, uh, you'd see a lot more activity and probably a more consistent uh, pattern on, 
opening and uh, closing of the gates. Uh, other thing I would say that uh, we're <laughs> we're experimenting with. It's not going real well yet, but uh, we're using timed locks on the bathrooms, the new bathroom at Heisey Park. We're gonna get that the kinks worked out of that. But it occurs to me that one of the things we could do at Kobe Park, so that it doesn't, it, it's a, a police function. I guess it's kind of a police activity, but. Uh, they're responsible for making sure things are locked and unlocked and yeah, we're looking a little bit more seriously now about automatic timers on those gates. If we could come up with something like that for Kobe Park, then we could, it, it could open and close itself more automatically. So, bit of an over answer on the question, but we got to get a dog park and I think Kobe Park's use will be a little bit more apparent if that's selected for the, for the dog park. But if it doesn't, when I leave this office, I'm going to leave an unresolved issue with a bottle of aspirin and it says, how do you manage Kobe Park and make the most of it? It's a tough one. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Next question tonight comes from Kim. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Where North Union Street ends and connects to Westgate, uh, it's a very dangerous intersection. Uh, it was a three-way stop for years. And um, there are cars that uh, park along the street, and sometimes you have trouble with visibility when you're at the stop. You know zone. that I'm not out there a lot, but I but I think she's 100 percent right. I tend to want to stop on Westgate myself <clears throat> from the old North School days. I, it, and I think the reason the signs came down were the obvious that uh, there was reduced traffic on that North School Loop Westgate. I think it's the actual street name. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the best things about this little uh, Monday night thing is we get feedback and input. It's a good one to look at. The, the chief of police and the service director will have a discussion about that. And I ran into some people last week when I was marrying a couple. And one of the attendees it was talking about the Atwood... Uh, Market Street two-way stop. So we'll go back and take a look at that. It's all, I mean, for me, it's good not to keep changing signalization and intersections, but always to uh, to be making sure that the thinking or assumptions that went that go into having stop signs or not uh, is looked at. And of course, people who listen to this uh, most every week remember we had a. a, a same sort of discussion that revolved around stop signs out in the Hessenauer subdivision. So, Kim, you add a it's a, it's another uh, location for us to take a look at for stop signs. Okay. Uh, next, uh, Travis asked for an update on alley maintenance. Um, uh, we're gonna get mobilized and get going on it. The uh, the uh, relatively small. That's the belly, so I won't even say it. The guys that are responsible for that are also responsible for maintenance of water and sewer, and they've had some work there. And um, I think the answer to the question, Travis, is will be, you know, will be tackling it. If you go past the Fairview yard, there is a, a big pile of uh, grindings and concrete that needs crushed that be part of the material that we used on the alley. It's in the work plan. It'll probably be the end of the summer, early fall, in that little window uh, before we start picking up leaves. Uh, those are all the questions I had for tonight. Is that right? Okay, I would say um, that that staying tuned with this week's committee meetings, smart investment of time. Uh, been really pleased with the amount of Zoom participation that's been out there and um, I think we'll leave I'm gonna I'm we'd probably be if we had a rolling credits we could mention people but uh, Matt's gonna uh, sort of uh, splice in or cut in with some stuff from uh, Saturday a really outstanding event and it's remarkable how um, just a few people in the community really putting out a, a great effort make for uh, uh, and, you know, an enjoyable time, I think, by and large, uh, a safe time and uh, one heck of a fireworks show. So wherever you saw it, here's a couple minutes of it. 
but as Matt uh, rolls that, Sarah Capretta, who most people know, uh, I think there were four people that were involved in the in the non uh, baseball elements, and Sarah, Jim Gerstenslager, Matt Eckleberry, and um, help me, Payne. What's his first name? Joe. Joe. I'm sorry, Joe. Joe Payne. Those four, you know, kind of were the committee, and what they did in like the ten days uh, from the time we decided to have some food, have a, a safe car show, and and uh, do a little something at the park. They did a tremendous job. Um, and then over at the ballpark, everyone from Neil Schaffner, the coach at uh, a guy in high school, his assistant, uh, Phil Harris, maintained the field. That whole event went really well, and the media coverage on it was outstanding. And uh, it's fun when a galleon facility can be the focal point for a regional event like that. And and uh, the, the good vibes that came off of that were, were um, something to be uh, fun to be part of. If that's still running, the last person who was a great surprise that he contacted and said he could come was State Representative Reardon McLean. So the first pitch was Representative McLean, who could still play baseball, you can tell, and the valedictorian down at, uh, at Northmore High School. Uh, and so that was uh, just part of a really neat evening. And, and uh, so the people who put together all those three elements, congratulations to them. And uh, the people that saw the fireworks, here's, if that's up yet, here's a couple, couple minutes of that. And uh, great time. And uh, we'll see you on the Zoom meetings the next couple nights. And uh, appreciate you tuning in tonight.